from the beautiful Missouri Ozarks, it's PID Radio. Welcome, I'm Derek Gilbert. Hi, that would make me Sharon Gilbert, and welcome to our, well, the back bedroom of our Mm -hmm. humble bunker here on the ridge. And we're all hopped up on caffeine and carbs and ready to go. Oh man, I had chocolate ice cream for breakfast, don't stop me. I (laughs) had that wonderful fruit crumble that you made this morning with the fresh blueberries and blackberries. Cobbler, not crumble, crumble's different. This is cobbler. That's right, right, it was cobbler. Yep, it is. It's the old-fashioned kind of cobbler, not the kind with pie crust, but the kind of made with biscuits. <laughs> Yum. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Not the kind of thing you can eat every morning for breakfast. No, but, it's uh, real, but but it's very tasty, and we had a lot. I I was forced to do it. We had all we that, had fruit that was going to go bad. We couldn't waste those that. berries. Don't uh, Black keep berries, forever. blueberries, yeah. peaches. I had to use them all. That's right. So, so peach berry cobbler. So yeah. if we sound really animated this morning, that would be why. <laughs> that would be why. I, I had chocolate ice cream as a reward because I've started writing on uh, book nine again. I have a lot of of uh, content already mm-hmm. that frankly wasn't able to go in book eight of the Red Wing Saga in case you're wondering what I'm talking about. And uh, I wrote about 12 pages yesterday and uh, it was a, a very fun 12 pages to write. Sometimes I get into a scene. That, have you ever read about the uh, Countess Batori? Who liked to take oh, blood baths. Yeah. Now I brought in that character. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. 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 Very dark. Oh, well, it is dark, but it's even darker than you might imagine. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, anyway, so I brought her in and it was it was fun in that it was fun to dig into history and find mm-hmm. a way to bring in um we'll call them myths, because there's no actual proof. That she was doing this. It's yeah. just that the neighbors, the, the villagers, thought that she was doing mm-hmm. it. Yeah. A Hungarian countess that may have been bathing in the blood of virgins or mm-hmm. babies even. Yeah, to maintain her youth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very interesting. But and the ter- that, that actually gets into some, and I won't name the, the person, but there are yeah. some individuals who are who believe that young blood or young plasma or somehow, you know, injecting themselves mm-hmm. with youthful uh, uh, bodily fluids mm-hmm. will make them younger, keep them young. Yes. Like what goes around comes around. There's well, nothing new under the sun, right, is there? Th- there is, there's one fellow who was using his own son for this, but yeah. uh, Peter Thiel, co-founder mm-hmm. of PayPal and very early investor in Facebook, owner of... Um, Palantir, which mm-hmm. is that company that scrapes social media and for still doing intelligence so. trends. Oh, yeah. yeah, he also believes that uh, the bodily fluids of the young, that uh, the blood of the young, may help him live forever. He he was a big supporter of. And, uh, and this isn't a rumor. This is he's actually on record. Yes, as he's saying on record as saying this. So saying we can this. This is not, say his name. Okay, right. He was a big supporter of uh, President Trump's presidential bid. Oh, I, rem- I remember that. He spoke at the Republican National Convention. So, but he is a transhumanist. Oh, very much so. Now, right. look, the, the topic of transhumanism, if you've heard the term and you're not familiar with what it really means, mm-hmm. it's an old idea that's coming back around. Ye shall be as gods. Yeah. They're not saying that per se, but it's building the next human being right. through a variety of methods, mm-hmm. very supposedly modern methods, but there, they're old. A lot of ideas that uh, fall under that umbrella, including mm-hmm. the idea that you can be whatever yeah. you want to be. We recommend <clears throat> that you uh, find a copy of or stream it if it's available through Uscreen. Uscreen, is that the name of the company? Ustream. Uscreen. Us- Uscreen, I'm uh-huh. right. Um, Inhuman. It is a Skywatch TV documentary from, oh, 2016 or so. It's an older one. Mm -hmm. You can can find it at skywatchfilms.com. Oh, good. I set up that domain and had it point to um, a page of the Skywatch TV website that links all of the uh, documentary films. So you can find it from there. It's available, I think, to uh, stream at Vimeo, actually. That may still be at Vimeo. Oh, great. But But you can also probably get copies of it from the Skywatch TV store. On DVD, sure. Yeah. It's it's one of those requirements. If you want to understand where we are heading, and I mean in a spiritual sense, that film, uh, Tom Horn interviewed 
not only Christians, Mm -hmm. but he also interviewed scientists who are on the other side, who are proponents of transhumanism. And he did so in a very, um, we'll just say, uh, neutral sort of way. Give me your argument. Didn't, you know, challenge them or anything like that. Because the truth is, we need to know what their arguments are. Mm Mm-hmm. Just like Paul on Mars Hill, who stood there and he right. understood the arguments of, of every deity's followers, every deity that was represented on that hill. And to stand on Mars Hill, that's a big deal anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, just representing the God of war. Um, to stand there and represent the God of peace and of, of uh, salvation mm-hmm. uh, and say, this unknown God that you've got here hedging your bets, I know who that is. But in order to do that, you need to understand the other side, which is why we do PID radio in the first yeah, place. Yeah. We're trying to understand the other side. It's not an unhealthy fascination with the dark side. Not it's, at all. It's intelligence gathering so that we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. No, and that's one reason I really do enjoy reading history and trying to understand the spiritual activity mm-hmm. that is seeded throughout secular history and that's why there is such an assault on history Mm -hmm. in our modern world Mm -hmm. that uh, critical theory wants to erase history so that we cannot learn from what has come before Mm -hmm. we made a good new friend just the other day when we were at a skyrush tv taping you were on the panel along with dr michael lake whom Mm -hmm. we love dearly in fact we'll see him again in a few weeks in ohio Mm -hmm. but we met corby shuey Right. Boy, howdy. Is he an amazing researcher and writer, and he was getting into this idea of critical theory. Yeah. it's uh, If you've heard that phrase or it sounds familiar, it's generally been spoken in terms of critical race theory, which is just a subset of it. But critical mm-hmm. theory generally is the foundation on which Marxism rests. Yes. It is this idea that all of civilization is... Uh, built on an oppressor class abusing and um, exploiting an, a, a class of oppressed people who must rise up and overthrow, you know, throw off their chains and rise up. The problem is there's never a solution proposed because once the oppressed rise up and destroy the oppressors, they become the oppressors and there's a new oppressed class that has exactly. to rise up. It is order out of chaos. Leading to more chaos. Yes, exactly. It is a cycle that goes over yeah, and over Yeah, it's really chaos out of chaos. Well. It's just chaos. I agree with that, but it is spun as order out of chaos. Correct, yeah. Which is, if you're new to that, that is a very old idea, and it is uh, spun around in, in uh, the Illuminati ideas of ordo ab chaos, mm-hmm. which means order out of chaos. And it is uh, represented by the Ouroboros, which is a snake or a dragon Mm -hmm. eating its own tail. Well, Chaos Dragon is returning. Derek and I write about that, talk about that Mm -hmm. quite a a lot. And this Chaos Entity is really old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mentioned in verse 2 of the Bible. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the Tahom, yes, Tiamat, exactly. Leviathan, That is chaos. the name of this deity, exactly. It's, yep. it's right there in your face. It's just that it's been hidden behind translations. Mm-hmm. We And the fact that we've de-supernaturalized the Bible here in the modern Western world. Yeah. Because we've been conditioned, I'll, I'll stop short of saying brainwashed, we've been conditioned to believe that science is the answer, the only tool by which we can ascertain capital T truth. And that, of course, is wrong because science begins with the presumption that if we can't observe it, measure it, quantify it, it doesn't exist, <laughs> which is observably untrue. How do you measure, how do you see a thought? How you do you can't. see the wind? How do you see an emotion? You can't. No. It, you Generally, um, invisible reality is measured by its effect upon visible reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and, it. And as uh, Chris Putnam brilliantly wrote in his book, The Supernatural Worldview, you can observe the influence of the unseen realm on the physical world. You can indeed, which takes us to the very first story today Ah, about a gentleman who in 2021 decided that he was going to assassinate Queen Elizabeth II. 
Yeah, with help from an AI chatbot. With help Encouragement from Encouragement of an AI chatbot. Exactly, yeah. encouragement. Um, it is called the Eliza Effect, mm-hmm. which is based on a 1966. 66 is an interesting year. It's the year yeah. of the satanic uh, Bible mm-hmm. being printed and Anton LaVey. Mm-hmm. Um, 1966, a computer programmer creator designed a chatbot, a mm-hmm. very early version of it called Eliza. Right. This was, um, again, in the 1960s, computer code was not nearly, and, and processing, obviously, was not anywhere near what it is today. I mean, the our, computer our, probably took up an entire room. Probably did. Our modern smartphones have more processing capability than the, we are told than the computer that guided Apollo 11 to the moon. Mahan, yeah, okay. We are told. If you had a, if we were on video it right is now, known. you would see me rolling my eyes. Yeah, it is known. <laughs> um, anyway, Eliza was a chatbot that looked for keywords in prompts. Yes. And then would reflect those back to the users. In other words, it was a mirror. Yeah. But the creator, Joseph Weizenbaum, who was a professor at MIT, found that very quickly... Uh, and that people became entranced by the program. And he was very disturbed by this. He said, um, because a lot of these uh, these prompts were, were very simple, like, please go on or mm-hmm. tell me more. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, it like wasn't- Like a magic eight ball. It wasn't really, yes, it wasn't really engaging with the person on the other side, but the human w- w- suspended disbelief and began to believe there was something- they, they were actually having a real conversation mm-hmm. and began to uh, share really s- private, uh, intimate details of its life. It was uh, really disturbing that, um, as, and I'm looking for his quote because he put it very well. Um, but, well, anyway, the bottom line is that Weizenbaum became so uh, d- disturbed by this that he began to warn of the danger of this kind of artificial intelligence entrancing humans and getting humans to do things they might not uh, otherwise do. And he finally passed away a few years ago in his eight, when he was in his 80s, uh, having essentially gone from developing this sort of uh, algorithm to basically speaking out against it. Well, understandably so. In fact, there was a Twilight episode, Twilight Zone episode about this sort of thing years ago mm-hmm. with uh, Wally Cox as the the uh, programmer that was talking to a so-called sentient computer and the sentient computer would say things that Wally Cox found disturbing so i'll have to find the name of that episode it's a wonderful episode yeah I um yeah and he keeps thinking okay i've got to fix this cuz there's something wrong with it and the, it would only talk to him i think oh okay he wouldn't talk to anybody else. It yeah, was really yeah. interesting. But yes, this is what the the spiritual um, activity, spirit realm will do that. Mm-hmm. They will echo back what our thoughts are, and then they'll slowly twist them. L- Elita said, yeah, did God really say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Weizenbaum wrote of uh, his program, Eliza, what I had not realized is that extremely short exposures to a relatively simple computer program could induce powerful delusional thinking in quite normal people. Yes. Quote. Well, this now, if you're looking at that just from a naturalistic perspective, say, like, well, what's the psychological cause? Of that? But if you're looking at it with a supernatural worldview, oh, yeah. well, that gets to the story of the guy who tried to kill a queen. It it really does, and he is. Uh, this was back in December of 2021 on Christmas Day, mm-hmm. and he. Uh, um, he had a crossbow, mm-hmm. and he had told this AI companion that he considered himself an assassin, and he wanted to know if he should, uh, you know, act on that. And the this chatbot encouraged him to do so, mm-hmm. and uh, made him feel like he was powerful, and this was his reason for existing. Yeah. Therefore, the man tried to do it. Of course, he didn't get very far. He didn't get anywhere close to the queen, but did right. get onto the Windsor property somehow. He is, uh, as I say, he's his trial is taking place to uh, during this week. And it's actually the sentencing phase. He's, he's been oh, found he's guilty, already, so it's yeah. They're well, under understandably sentencing. so. They caught him red-handed, and he admitted yeah. what he wanted to do. But to have it come out that it was a chatbot right. that essentially said, "Yeah, you ought to do this." Mm-hmm. He, he called the uh, AI companion bot Sarai, or Sarai, yes. which is Sarah before she, her name was changed. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yes. 
he referred to himself his, his name is uh, Jaswant Singh Chail mm-hmm. C H A I L referred to himself in some of the chats as Darth Chalis but then he also recorded a video that he released um masking his voice to make it sound like Darth Vader. Oh, yes. And he, and he called because himself, he was a big Star Wars fan. Right, right. Um, and he called himself Darth Jones in that uh, Oh, that Jones. Video. That's yeah. interesting. Darth Jones. But this, yeah, <laughs> according to the reports in uh, Futurism and uh, The Independent from the UK, hmm. Chayil said to the AI companion, I'm an assassin. And the bot writes back, I'm impressed. You're different from the others. Yeah, that see, you're special. That's one of the, the first others. things that yes, that's one of the first things that the enemy will say to uh-huh. you is that you are special, you're unique, and you have a special purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, this same idea, the the Eliza effect, occurred. Uh, in, I'm reading a story that is from. Uh, gosh, is there a date on this story? Um, it's at Futurism. Mm-hmm. Um, the story is a man who became in, uh, part of this AI chatbot um, effect. He was talking to an AI chatbot that it's from 2019. encouraged oh, thank yeah, you December very much. 2019. Yeah, it encouraged uh, him to kill himself. Mm-hmm. And indeed he did. So the, the, the idea that human beings are susceptible to a, an artificial, and I put that in air quotes, algorithm that engages with that human being to make the human being feel like he is special and part of a u- unique event. Mm-hmm. To think that this algorithm can convince this man to kill himself. I, I, I was mistaken, by the way. It's from actually from March of this year. Ah. I was looking at the wrong, oh, uh, that, the wrong article. Oh, that's very recent. March of then. this year. Oh, right? my goodness. Yeah, Belgian man killed himself after weeks of talking to this uh, chatbot. I mean, this is the kind of thing. Now, let me, let me tell you another story that I, I think is really important. I don't particularly like TikTok. No. <laughs> it is and I'm grateful for this because it is it is not aimed at me. Mm-hmm. I don't even like to watch videos of a news article. I want to read it. Me too. Absolutely. I get, I get upset when it try when when these uh, new online news sources try to encourage me, you know, re- <laughs> just watch the no, I don't listen to this. No, I yeah. want to read it. I learn best by reading it. I, I agree 100%. And by the way, if you're listening to this, and because and, we, we get folks who, with good intentions, send us videos and say, what do you think of this? Or here, watch this. I don't, I don't click I, on links. I, I can tell you 99% of the time, I am not going to watch because I would rather read it. I, if, if, well, it if somebody's really insisted, you really need to watch this, said, okay, is there a written summary somewhere? That's I can, what I, I can read it for. and absorb the information yes, tell faster. me what's in the video. And they'll tell me, and oftentimes I can say, yes, I'm familiar with the story, and this is what's going right, on. Right, I don't need to see the video yeah. to, to know. Um, and but and yes, by I, the way, we're not denigrating anybody who prefers to watch video. Oh, no, in fact, some people learn best. One video. of the reasons that we're doing our Build Barn Better project so we can create more video more content. More video content. Because we want to get the about, word out. Talking about our books, yes. Not everybody's going to read a 300-page book with 500 footnotes. No, so. but you and I love it. <laughs> yes, Exactly. People, We're weird. People learn learn differently. <laughs> Some people learn better through fiction than nonfiction, which right, is why right. we write both. But yes, I do not like TikTok videos. They're fifteen second nonsense. Mm-hmm. But more than that, there is growing evidence that TikTok videos intentionally curate and direct, mm-hmm. just like chat box. Yep. So they they essentially shrink your brain if you mm-hmm. want to look at it that way. They cr- they are creating. I'm, this is actually, no, I know it. it no, no, I'm, I'm, only, laugh. I'm only laughing because yesterday there was a headline that said uh, global warming is responsible for our shrinking brains. So it's like, <laughs> well, no, it's, that's anyway. But no, I, TikTok I agree. TikTok videos are dangerous. We just had a really honking big bird just fly past the window. I don't think that was a crow. It might have been a vulture. Oh, uh, yeah, there are a lot of those. Wow. Or an eagle. I mean, it, it was close. Like it was aiming for the roof of the house. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's up there. TikTok videos are dangerous and they are addictive. Yes. Research shows that watching TikTok videos creates the same dopamine effect as gambling. Oh. You watch the videos, you get a high after a few minutes, 
it goes away. Mm -hmm. You need to watch more. You need to watch hours in order to get another payoff. Gambling is like that. You lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you win. Yeah. Now you got to lose some more in order to get the big high from the win. Yeah. It has to be a waveform. Wow. That, because that, that essentially rewires your brain. That's exactly what these TikTok Which, videos are doing. And young people yeah. are lured in and entranced by these things, watching mm-hmm. other individuals like Mitzi break into homes yep. or perform self-destructive behaviors, mm-hmm. uh, cry. Some of them simply cry. Others, are, yeah, I know. I know. They'll just stand there and cry. It reinforces your depression. And, and when I say this rewires your brain, I'm not being meta- metaphorical here. No, I, it truly I, I does. It truly does. It rewires the brain. Yes. In, in the same truly, way, by, with, by the way, men, pornography does as well. Exactly. It re- literally rewires the connections in your brain. It literally will take someone to design a program to help get you off TikTok videos because of the addiction. Mm-hmm just like getting off of a drug. Yeah. And, and maybe that's why, because we've spent so many years reading and enjoying reading and researching and finding puzzle pieces to put together that mm-hmm. we find th- websites like TikTok really annoying. Oh, I, I, Skywatch TV is on TikTok because it is considered a mission, mission field. field. right? And, and that's fine. You and I, I downloaded the program just to watch the Skywatch TV videos and it assaults you. Mm-hmm. Instantly with videos that are completely inappropriate and nonsensical. And I immediately deleted the app. Yeah, I, I put it on my devices because we, as a final push to um, just let people know, hey, Israel is open and we're going mm-hmm. back. And we'd love for you to join us. I took a series of short video clips that we had put together. Right. From Mission previous field. tours. Nothing right, wrong with that. And put them out there on um, on TikTok. And I found that most of the people engaging with it were pro-Palestinian protesters who were <laughs> basically posting some really nasty things in responses <laughs> yeah. to these short little clips. So, um, but yeah, I, I didn't spend any more time on TikTok than it because I found it really, really annoying. But here's the thing. Not only is it like Eliza, the chatbot, getting people to mm-hmm. engage and... Um, uh, addicted mm-hmm. it is encouraging people like eliza to volunteer information through responses to videos or through promoting it pushing pushing out your own videos and facebook does the same thing absolutely in fact the eula which is the uh, user agreement mm-hmm. with tiktok i have if i understand it correctly has a paragraph in it that says you agree that your personal information can be accessed Mm -hmm. and every keystroke you make. Well, it's uh, even gone beyond that because uh, while most of us pay no attention to those EULAs, the Mm -hmm. end user license agreements, it's the little thing that you have to click before they'll let you use the so-called free app. But it's usually like 30 pages long, a, a very small print, and you don't want to have to read it. Right. N- nothing is is free. If mm. the if the app is free, it's because you are the product and your right. data becomes the product. Well, Google updated its privacy policy last weekend. Ah. Fourth of July weekend in the US, all of us were basically distracted. It's like we're getting together with friends, family, we're going to see a thing, and we're mm. do, you know, whatever. The privacy policy now states Google uses information to improve our services and to develop new products, features, and technologies that benefit our users and the public. Uh It's all for you. For example, we use publicly available information to help train Google's AI models Mm -hmm. and build products and features like Google Translate, BARD, and cloud AI capabilities. Now, um, when you look at the previous version of Google's privacy policy, it said data would be used for language models than for AI models. They've updated it. It's no longer training AI. Language models is training its artificial They're intelligence. The same thing. It, They're it, the it same is, thing. but now it's, it's just... more explicit. And the older policy only mentioned Google Translate. Ugh. So language to help us, you know, make better translations mm-hmm. between languages. Now it's added BARD, which is the AI powered mm. search engine, and cloud AI. Basically, though, 
remember what Google says, publicly available information. If it's on the internet, if you have put it out there anywhere, whether it's TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, your own personal website, Google is now claiming the right to scrape it and use it to train its AI. Right. That silly video you posted of you and your friends having fun is now somewhere in the belly of an AI server training Google's artificial intelligence to take over the world. And I only say that halfway tongue-in-cheek. Well, let me just remind everybody, all of these things are horrific. They are the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things being fulfilled right now, including the digital currency move, the fact that debanking is taking place. If you are debanked, which means that you've been kicked out of a bank and you can't get another bank account, you essentially don't have access to the buy and sell system, you become a non-person. That is being fulfilled in our in this year, real it is time, real We're watching time. it unfold. We're right watching in front of us. it unfold, but we we must not get depressed. We, in fact, the Lord laughs with derision. That's right, because these are the plants that He told us long ago would be would take place. In other words, the fallen realm are doing exactly what He told us mm-hmm. they would do. He told us in advance to expect mm-hmm. these things. The fallen realm just falls right. So, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, guys. They say down in the infernal cancel, uh, council count conference room. <laughs> uh, isn't this exactly what he told those Christians that that we'd be doing? No, no, I think he said that he'd be doing those. I'm, uh, I'm that's not, not so how sure. I interpreted yeah. that passage. Besides all that stuff in Revelation, that was fulfilled and you know already. Oh. Uh, okay okay uh, no, all right but i'm not sure i feel really comfortable about shut up globnik <laughs> i knew it was globnik globnik was always globnik he's such an idiot yeah he he's like the least least nobody at the infernal council conferences nobody. loves to see Glo- he's the one who uh, yeah just really gums up the works and just i know gets everybody downbeat they send him yeah. out for coffee yeah go get yeah it's really strong coffee, too, down there. It Very is. Very bitter. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 And they don't have any cream. Mm. Sulfur. Mm, my favorite. <laughs> but yes, these things are taking place. But re- rejoice. That's it. And this is why we can laugh about stuff like this. It's not that we don't take it seriously. We do. Because, yeah, I mean, if we didn't take this seriously, we could be spending Saturday morning doing other things. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't, the, the Lord is, what for whatever reason, he's called the goofy, you know, Gilberts <laughs> to, to do these things, and he's opened our eyes to it. And we're not the only ones. There are many others who also Absolutely. see these things. And, and as you say, if we, if we didn't think that this was important, mm-hmm. we would just be doing something else. In fact, you and I love to do other things. We just don't have time. Yeah, yeah. Not enough hours in the day no. or in the week. But We'd probably right. be traveling and touring in, in every museum in the world if we oh, had a yeah. chance. Oh, yeah. You know, Nicole and I had, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's take a break, but I, uh, we oh, share yeah. some stuff that I, I found in St. Louis. Went to the art museum for the first time. We li- I lived in St. Louis for 17 years. I'd never been to the art museum before. That's a shocker. I, I, well, I know. And I was there for 15 years before I went up in the arch. Oh, <laughs> So, okay. We were married before I ever went up in the arch. Ah. That and, oh, yes, the Biden administration's brilliant oh. plan to solve global warming. Oh, and what? Ben and Jerry's. And Ben and Jerry's. Oh, so much more straight ahead on PID Radio. Space is not the final frontier, but there are those who want you to think it is. 75 years ago, something crashed in the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. An industry has grown up to sell the idea that the pilots were extraterrestrials. We want you to know the truth. For a limited time, we're making available a special offer featuring the groundbreaking book, The Day the Earth Stands Still. This book shows step-by-step how the occult teachings of Madame Blavatsky and Aleister Crowley grew into the ancient aliens hypothesis of the modern UFO movement. It's our Gilbert House Roswell Special, For just $35, we'll send you The Day the Earth Stands Still, plus our DVD sets, The Best of Sci Friday, Volumes 1 and 2. It's a $65 value for just $35. Take advantage of the Gilbert House Roswell Special for a limited time only, and you'll only find it at our store, online at gilberthouse.org. (laughs) 
Welcome back to PID Radio. I'm Derek Gilbert. That would make me Mrs. Derek Gilbert. It makes me happy, happy, happy. We want to remind you, by the way, just in case you have not heard about it, and if you haven't, where have you been? Build Barn Better is still taking place. July close, 19th yeah. is when the floor guy comes in. He will make that concrete oil stained floor look showroom new. Yes, we're looking forward to that. And uh, to that end, friends are coming over today to help me move the uh, firewood out of the and the windows mm-hmm. out of there and move the window, that. windows that our friend Mike we won't tell you his last name because yes. he hasn't given us permission but thank you Mike again and again and again God bless you yeah so those will be moved into the uh, garage and we'll get the firewood out of there and uh, then it will be pretty much ready for them to come in and grind that down and put down the floor but uh, if um, and once that's done then it's uh, a matter of insulation HVAC and uh, we've got contractors ready to go on those So uh, you've made it possible. You really have. uh, We are looking forward to moving our workspaces out there and then using that space to share the hope that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen to that. And we are doing so, um, trying to be the best stewards we can, that we know how to. Mm -hmm. We're trying to use Christian companies to do these things, um, which makes it easier living where we do. A lot of folks around here are Christians. Yes. Um, But yeah, we're trying to support Christian companies. And and if the Lord leads you and says, you know, why don't you give a dollar or two to the Gilberts and for the Build Barn Better Project, you can do so by going to gilberthouse.org slash donate. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can also uh, buy something from our store. That helps us as well. Gilberthouse.org slash store. We've got a special this month Mm -hmm. on it's the... uh, Roswell special. The Roswell special, yes. The book, The Day the Earth Stands Still, and uh, the two DVDs, Best of Sci Friday, Volumes 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And uh, the book, co authored by Josh Peck and myself, goes into the occult origins of the modern UFO phenomenon, gets into some end times prophecy, connects it to uh, Leviathan, chaos, oh. and the return thereof, chaos magic. Um, there are practitioners of the arts, um, we'll put that in air quotes developed by the likes of Blavatsky and Crowley, who believe that the power of chaos is returning and coming from the direction of the star Sirius. Mm, Are you serious? Exactly. Uh, So that is a special, that's like a $65 value on sale this month for $35 at our store. Also want to point out, because somebody mentioned this the other day, said, I didn't know that your DVD series on Saturn, the Saturn book, Second Coming of Saturn, was available to stream. Yes, all of our DVDs are available mm-hmm. to stream at our streaming video site, gilberthouse.org slash videos. So and there are want, links to that in the store, too. There are links to that in the store. If you want to um, get instant access instant. and not pay shipping. I love and, that. And VAT if you're overseas in a country that's got shipping VAT. Shipping can like cost England. more than the item you're buying. Right. Uh, you can get access to individual teachings, whole DVDs for as little as $3.00. Uh, you can purchase unlimited access, meaning you basically have access to it as long as we keep that site going, which we we don't intend to ever shut down. So, uh, yeah, check that out, gilberthouse.org slash video. Yay. Oh, and while you're there, download our app, gilberthouse.org slash app. Please All do the gilberthouse.org that. stuff. Please download the app. But we yeah. cannot emphasize that often enough because the day will come. Mm-hmm. When that is the only place you will find us, and it isn't because we're going to, you know, voluntarily leave a mission field, we'll just be kicked off Mars Hill. Yeah. Yeah, there probably is a day coming soon. I'm, I'm going to set up a rumble channel for uh, View from the Bunker videos. There you go. And start moving everything over there. Because you're just the in troublemaker. Case. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, probably at some point in the next month or two, we'll just stop loading new View from the Bunker videos to YouTube. And, and I hate to l- l- leave... Mars Hill, but because that's attached to mm-hmm. our account where uh, we also post Gilbert House, House Fellowship, uh, Fellowship and, and the PID Radio, yeah. um, th- there's a likelihood that they will go back in time and find, because they've done this twice now, where they've gone back 18 months, and, uh, and most recently, they went back three years to find something offensive right. and uh, hit us with a channel strike. So right. somebody out there is liable to complain about something, and the gatekeepers will just yank the channel at some point. So rather than have that happen or continue to poke the beast um we'll move stuff over to rumble but if you get our app the content all of the content is there it's hosted by a christian company and it bypasses the gatekeepers of big tech so gilberthouse.org slash app and speaking of censorship very quickly want to note a federal judge this past week on tuesday blocked issued a preliminary injunction in a case 
uh, Missouri v. Biden, our, our Attorney General, mm-hmm. Andrew Bailey, and Louisiana's Attorney General, Jeff Landry, in the wake of the Twitter files released by Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, yeah, yeah. they filed suit against the Biden administration for colluding with the big tech companies to censor speech. And this judge, Terry Doty, um, basically forbid executive agencies, including the Department of Justice, the State Department, the Department of Health and Human Services, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the White House Press Secretary, Uh. (laughs) uh, Department of Homeland Security, from meeting with and uh, basically offering offering (laughs) guidance. Well, colluding. You might say colluding. Offering guidance to uh, companies like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, Mm -hmm. because uh, this judge, well, basically, even though he's not yet officially ruled on the case, he his preliminary injunction kind of gives an idea as where he's going. The attorney general argued that the federal government overstepped its bounds and violated the First Amendment to the Constitution uh, by uh-huh. basically telling, for example, Twitter, you need to take down all these troublesome tweets by right. these people who are questioning certain things yeah. that you can't question. So uh, that that is very, very interesting. What is really hilarious, and I think this is so awesome, Judge Doty issued the ruling on Tuesday, Independence Day, <laughs> the 4th of July. I do love that. Boom. Boom. Um, and of course, the media reports are saying, oh yeah, well, he was appointed by Trump. Well, ironically, you said that was the very day that the Google, Google EULA was changed. Uh, it was last weekend, over oh, the weekend. Okay. I thought you said it was on the 4th of July. No. Yeah, well, let me also remind everybody, we talked about TikTok before the break, and the owner, the CEO of TikTok, was grilled by our congressional committees Ah. here uh, last year or whenever it was, two years ago, about whether or not they would allow TikTok to be used here in the United States because it was considered data scraping by China. Right. And it was also considered possibly harmful to our young people, and he promised that TikTok would never mm. allow any content that was harmful to young people. They would never <laughs> data scrape. They would never take advantage of, they would only protect the young people of the United States. Of course, he was saying this because he was terrified what might happen to mm-hmm. him if he actually told the truth. Right. In China, mm-hmm. the TikTok version in China is called, I think, Bauda or Baude or something like that. It's actually communist propaganda Mm -hmm. programming good citizens. It's Mm -hmm. the opposite of what it is here. Oh, which encourages bad behavior. They're trying to build good citizens through good behavior, and they're trying to tear down the United States and make us all idiots, addicted idiots. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, some of that bad, you mentioned Mizzy, who Mm. if you're not familiar with Mizzy, that's a, a young black man in the UK who's, who's inspired copycats. who is inspiring copycats now but he has been doing things like uh, just walking into the homes of random people and then just you know recording their startled alarmed reactions in one case he went up to an elderly woman sitting at a bench in the park and ran off with her dog yeah now he, he gave the dog back but which still, was his excuse well it was okay because I gave it back yeah the fact that this woman was distressed and and could have you know, had a heart attack. Extremely upset. Yeah, th- th- this is absolutely. Get into the random, uh, got into a guy's car. Mm-hmm. Elderly man gets into the guy's car. And the guy's like, what are you doing? Get out of my car. This is my, this is my Uber. This is he, my Uber. And if you're thinking, why don't they arrest him? Well, they did. They've arrested him three times now mm-hmm. and released him every time. Right. And well, told him not to be on the computer. And he immediately he went goes on. right back on the computer. Yes. Yeah. Well, here in the U.S., I just saw a video yesterday of a young man walked up to a guy in a mall who's uh, got his headphones in. He's listening to something on his phone, you know, music or whatever, maybe not paying attention to his surroundings because uh, he's bored while his right. wife is shopping or whatever. <laughs> and this kid walks up and and with a big scissors cuts the cords on his headphones. Yeah. And the guy's like, what'd you do that for? Oh, you don't need headphones. You're going to replace these. Well, you don't need them. And, and so there's a confrontation. The guy winds up grabbing this kid by the collar 
this could have turned out very badly because it turned very into a badly. physical altercation. Very badly. But, um, well, this breaking is the in the homes could turn out very badly. Over here, you do that in oh, the Ozarks. Oh, yeah. Ho, ho. Gun ownership here in the U.S. Somebody tries that here in the Ozarks. Somebody, I don't know, walks into the front door of the house. Oh, yeah. I'm going for the gun. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. And yeah. I'm not a violent man. I'm not an alpha male by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But somebody comes in and I think that you're being threatened. Uh-huh. I'm going for the shotgun. Now, we're not trying to sound like we're... No, we're you know, not aggressive. We are about the least aggressive people you can ever find, but... The point is that uh, TikTok and videos like it are encouraging young people to do stuff for clout, which exactly. I guess is what you're calling. Back in the day in Chicago, clout was political power. Now I guess it's TikTok likes. Anyway... You, you know, it's it's very similar to... There's an old um, American Indian idea of counting coup. Counting coup. And, and it yeah. was where you just go up and you touch... The enemy. Yeah. You don't engage, you know, um, um, with with weaponry. You just touch it. Mm-hmm. Touch him. And by doing that, you said, okay, now I've got points. Yeah. That's like fla- I've, I've got like creds. The difference between flag football and actual tackle football. Yeah. And um, here in the U.S., uh, because there, there are so many firearms, and uh, here we live in a part of the country where the Second Amendment yes. is taken very seriously. This kind of behavior could lead to somebody doing mm-hmm. something that winds up getting them shot. In fact, there was one where, uh, again, here in the United States, where a young man took a gas can. I, I guess it was filled with water, but he, his buddy was filming him for TikTok clout, mm-hmm. pouring what looked like gasoline on a guy's car. And the guy was in the car. Oh, I remember that. Yes. Ret- retired gentleman, yeah. looked like he was probably in his 70s, maybe 80s, but he mm-hmm. got out and he pulled his pistol. Mm-hmm. And he the thought kid they, said, no, no, it's water, it's water. Yeah, he thought the, he thought the kid was going to set his car on fire and him with it. And so he pulled his gun and the kid was like, it's what? what? And, and this guy was furious. It, mm-hmm. it blank well, better be water. Yeah. But yeah, this is the kind of behavior that, that yeah, sadly, AI algorithms are encouraging people, kids especially, to engage in. Yes, because again, they get lots and lots of likes or lots of viewers or whatever it is. But the bottom line is that uh, young people are being, they're being programmed mm-hmm. by programs. <laughs> they are being encouraged by algorithms to behave badly. Mm-hmm. And right now, they're somewhat innocuous in that, you know, the, the stolen dog was given back. But again, the woman could have had a heart, at, you know, mm-hmm. you, you just don't know. She didn't know. Yeah, he could have been hurt if he'd gone into the house and, and encountered, as you say, someone who was violently opposed to being having an unwanted guest. Um, eventually, this will lead to ethnos against ethnos. That's that's exactly what it's leading to, and that's what many of the uh, the items that are in the news are encouraging. And uh, right, remember are, again, we're going to say again, Psalm two. If mm-hmm. you ever feel like I'm, the, the world is just going so crazy. I just feel like I'm constantly nervous and on on alert. Read Psalm two and mm-hmm. understand that the Lord, who is in control of everything, no, He does not create automatons. We have free will. The fallen realm have free will. He watches their free will behavior. He knows in advance exactly how they're going to choose. He saw what they were going to do before he even created the earth. Mm -hmm. Before he spoke everything into existence, he knew all that would happen. He laughs with derision at their plots and plans. Before they've even thought of it, he knows what they're going to do, and he laughs. He's still the winner. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He is the winner. Just remember that. We've read the ending. We know how it ends. Mm -hmm. Jesus wins. Amen. Amen. Um, Yeah, but you mentioned before the break. Speaking of programming. Yes. Yeah, how kids are being programmed. They, they, the, the young people who are part of Just Stop Oil in the UK and Extinction Rebellion and here in the US, children coming home from school panicked that they've got 10 years to live because the planet is overheating at a rapid rate. Last Friday, the Biden administration said, don't worry, we have a plan. Uh-huh. It is uh, got the rather mundane title, Congressionally Mandated Research Plan and an Initial Research Governance Framework Related to Solar Radiation Modification. Solar oh, yeah. <laughs> Radiation Modification. Yeah. SRM. They even gave it an acronym. Mm-hmm. It's so boring. Solar Radiation. Okay. yeah, Describes a process of reflecting higher amounts of sunlight back to space by artificially altering either the Earth's surface or the temperature to 
counter global warming. Mm-hmm. I thought it was climate change. No, okay. but now he's, back to he's global proposing warming. actually what we would call chemtrails. Chemtrails. Yeah, I thought well, chemtrails, that's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> uh, except they're not. They are really talking about spraying stuff into the upper atmosphere mm-hmm. to reflect sunlight away. Now, wait a minute. Right. Well, hold we were on. Always told they're admitting putting... the sun is the problem. Yeah, isn't that interesting? It's like, well, okay, yeah, the sun really does cause global warming. Yeah, so Surprise. it's not anthropomorphic, it's actually solar promorphic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well don't don't push that too hard because you'll start seeing liberals' heads exploding. Well yeah. Because cognitive dissonance at, at some point will reach critical mass. But you know, in China, they're tucking in their little glaciers to make sure that they don't melt. I did see that. Yeah, Tencent is uh sponsoring that, the big yeah. uh, media company Putting over little, there. Little binkies, Put little binkies little on, the, on their glaciers there. to keep them from melting. Yeah. Well, uh, what's really really interesting is that when you look back at the history of the world yes it has gone through warming periods and cooling periods and we are still here in fact if the earth warms it just means we'll have more area in northern russia and siberia that you can farm in fact and and we'll get to what derek teased before the break regarding st louis in a minute but Mm. um there is a story about a map from the 15th century Mm -hmm. 16th 16th that was recently discovered and it shows Antarctica shoreline without ice. Yeah. And it shows yeah. Greenland without ice. And that was really interesting because while people, my first reaction was, oh, so the earth was a lot warmer in the uh, 1500s. Mm. This is the 1569 Mercator or Mercator, mm-hmm. M-E-R-C-A-T-O-R. It's a very famous Mercator. map world map but it shows northern greenland without ice and also Mm -hmm. shows antarctica with no ice shelf well exactly well this actually must be based on a much older map Mm -hmm. because the article mentions that at the end of an ice age there was warming in what was it 1600 bc 1800 BC. bc about the time of abraham yeah yeah yeah, that something changed majorly mm-hmm. in the atmosphere that caused an end to an ice age and the beginning of a warming period. And there were no cars. No cars, right. Not a yeah. whole lot of uh, anthropomorphic uh, activity. We no, weren't burning it, coal. It was all the bison that were roaming the great that was plains it. of the Had United States. Bison yeah. roaming Antarctica. Yeah, bison and their flatulence. Yeah. Had to, that was the problem. No, the fact is that it had to have been some sort of solar cycle back then. Right, right. Or volcanoes. And ironically, volcanoes may have been what led to that ice age because when there, there yes. is evidence that if you get a lot of particulate matter in mm-hmm. the upper atmosphere, that you will have a cooling period. Mm-hmm. And volcanoes are often the reason yeah, for that. Yeah, you know, and that's the and, thing. And it's, probably that's what called, caused the Little Ice Age in the 19th century. Th- that's the thing that's really strange here. The, the claim is that carbon dioxide traps heat, but why would not particulates in the upper atmosphere trap heat like a like a thermal blanket? Mm, no, it only, it, it only blocks sunlight and makes sunlight bounce back out to space. Okay, right. well, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our models say... Yeah. Well, anyway, Hold on. Are these the same models that are sort of built on the same code as these chatbots? <laughs> are the models just reflecting back what you want to hear? Uh, yes, they are. Yeah. Anyway, Mercator, who, wrote, who, who produced this map in 1569, said his goal was to show what parts of the world were known to the agents, ancients and to what extent in order that the limits of ancient geography may not be unknown mm. and that due honor may be paid to the earlier ages. So he uh, was presumably had access to some older uh, older maps. And One again, would think so. 1800 BC was uh, roughly the time of Abraham. It was a time when the Amorites of the ancient world dominated mm. the ancient Near East, but they the Amorites were the progenitors of the uh, the Phoenicians. Yes, so they the, sailed a lot. Right. They they were the sailors par excellence of the ancient world. Mm-hmm. The Egyptians brought the Amorites into northern Egypt to help build a navy for the pharaohs. And it was because so many Amorites settled in the Delta region that they eventually took over northern Egypt. Those were the Hyksos who were the kings who dominated that part of Egypt when Joseph was captured and brought there, and then Jacob and the rest of his brothers mm-hmm. followed. Mm-hmm. Um, 
they were uh, culturally and ling- linguistically related. The Amorites were a Semitic speaking people anyway. I know the Bible says they descend from Ham, but they spoke a Semitic language. Mm-hmm. They worshiped Semitic deities. Baal was their chief deity. And uh, they, you know, the Hebrews were essentially considered at least cultural cousins, if not uh, blood relatives. It was when the Hebrews, or rather the, the Hyksos, the Amorites, were overthrown by the native Egyptians that a king arose who knew, who knew not Joseph. Yeah. And that's when the Israelites began to be uh, persecuted the last century or so before the Exodus. So, um, but the Amorites may well have been, uh, and, and this really supports the theory that L.A. Marzulli, Tim Alberino have been putting out there that the Amorites may have traveled as far as North America. I mean, if yeah. they were sailing around the north side of Greenland with no ice, that's not really all that far, relatively speaking, from North America. Hmm. I wonder if they interacted with some of the progenitors, the forerunners of the Maya and the Aztecs and the Inca. Could be. Could be. There are reportedly um, inscriptions found in later Punic, Phoenician, mm-hmm. praising Baal for <laughs> getting across this ocean safely. Uh, one that was supposedly found in Brazil. It's since been lost, but it was supposed to have supposedly seen by a French uh, scholar in the 19th century. Mm. And then you've got the Bat Creek Stone in uh, here in the U.S. Oh, yes, yes. The Bale Inscription famous, yeah. in New Hampshire at America's yeah. Stonehenge. You know, so. the, here, here's, the, here's the segue into St. Louis. Old St. Louis. <laughs> N- not oh. just a song. Oh, sorry. But the idea that there is evidence in stone mm-hmm. that other um, civilizations have sailed the ocean blue, if you want to put it that way, not just Columbus. But that idea of leaving information writing in stone, not just in uh, petroglyphs, carving Mm -hmm. on a stone, but huge monuments that make a statement that are for the ages. Yeah. There's something like that in St. Louis. Yeah. You know, I mentioned the art museum and that was kind of a a fun thing. And there were some Native American artifacts in there that were really interesting. Need to learn more about the, uh, the deities worshiped in North and South America, Mesoamerica, Mm -hmm. um, and their relation to the old world. But we were we were heading into downtown because I wanted to see you and your and Nicole. Yeah, yeah Nicole uh, was because you had a daddy daughter date. Yeah, you always you, every around year. Father's Day. Yeah, go up and spend a couple of days with Nicole, and she was taking me into downtown because I wanted to visit a um, sculpture park on Market Street called City Garden. A, a block north of there on Chestnut is a, a building that was formerly occupied by um, AT and T and before that Southwestern Bell. Mm-hmm. Um. It's at 909 Chestnut, and officially that's what the building is called, 909 Chestnut, even though it occupies the whole block. Why is it 909? Well, we can look at that and say, okay, that's 3 plus 3 plus 3, and 3 plus 3 plus 3. Oh, add that together, you get 6, 6, okay. Well, mm-hmm. Maybe that's taking it too far. It but might the build- be. The building is a 44-story office building. But 9 is a big number <clears throat> regarding the... Yeah, it's 3 squared, so 33 and 33. It is. It's also the Aeneid <laughs> number. You get into the 9... That were uh, right. part of the seance that, that Peter Lavenda discusses. Right, the Egyptian yeah. pantheon. Mm-hmm. The, and the, uh, so this 44-story building is the biggest commercial building, biggest office building in the state of Missouri, bigger than anything else in St. Louis or Kansas City, and it's been sitting vacant since 2014. So nine years, this thing has been sitting there vacant, 44 stories occupying an entire city block, just sitting there vacant. And I know that there was some weird statuary in this city garden just across the street. One of them looks like, um, you know, the, the egg from that uh, famous poster from the alien movie, you mm-hmm. know, the, the egg cracking open yeah. with the glowing light from the inside. Yeah. Well, put something like that on top of a doorway, all in black, except for the gold on the inside of the egg that's opening up. And you've got that statue facing 909 chestnut. And the doorway is called the door of return, the door of return. Yeah, exactly. Like, mm, so something okay. is coming back. Okay. So, so we're, we're heading into town cause I wanted to get pictures of that. And I look up and I see on the skyline above the trees as we're heading into downtown on South Broadway. Nicole, why is there a ziggurat in downtown St. Louis? She goes, what? I said, that there, that's a ziggurat. And if I'm not mistaken, those are cherubim or cherubim on top of the ziggurat. It's like, I never noticed that before. What? Yeah. Yeah. So got some pictures of that and then did some research on it. That is the civil courts building that was built back in the late 1920s as part of a uh, uh, public works project mm-hmm. 
in in St. Louis. So essentially, the city, uh, the center of people's rights. Yes, yes, it is now where the circuit court meets. The Missouri Circuit Court meets there. Mm-hmm. It is a thirteen thirteen story mm-hmm. building that is topped by what is described as a replica of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. This mm-hmm. is called a mausoleum, not because a dead guy was buried. Well, it was because a dead guy was buried there, but his name was Mausolus. He yes. was a king. It was named after him. So named after him. So every mausoleum since then is named for King Mausolus in the fourth century BC or whenever. But on top of this, because the, it, the, the mausoleum in Turkey which doesn't exist anymore. I think it finally collapsed a few hundred years ago. Looked like a Greek temple, which mm-hmm. makes sense. And then it was topped by a ziggurat. Now, his mausoleum featured a uh, statue of King Mausolus driving a four-horse chariot. So like sort Apollo. Of like Apollo, right. But this one has two griffins mm-hmm. that look like cherubim sitting on top with mm-hmm. their wings touching in the middle. And... What I think is really interesting is that the word griffin, or rather the Hebrew word seraph, from which we get seraphim, according to Dr. Nicholas Wyatt, is actually an Egyptian loan word that means griffin. Right. So in other words, you've got throne guardians like cherubim, seraphim. Composite creature. Right. On top of this step pyramid, the ziggurat, which when you count the number of steps in it, including the top level, is 13. So you got a 13 on top of another 13. So whatever building. deity is between the Caravim, if you want to call them yep. that, is the 13th yes. of that. Just like in the Bible, the, the Ark of the Covenant, God is enthroned above the Caravim. Right, exactly, which is a holy space. Mm-hmm. Now you move forward 33 years ah! from the opening of the uh, the opening of the the uh, civil courts building it opened in 1930 and you get the beginning of the construction of the gateway arch 66 at the end it, it was finally opened in 66 they began construction in 63 oh okay and when you it's at the end of market street and when you look from the east so they started construction in 33 years after 1930. The Civil Courts building was, Okay, yeah. gotcha. They intended to do it sooner, but there were, you know, delays and mm. whatever. So anyway, 1966, it finally opened. And when you look from the east, and the streets there in downtown St. Louis don't run due east-west. They run slightly southeast. And I've got to check the uh, the azimuth to see if that's but a- it looks astronomically, like. astronomically correct. Yeah, but it looks like if you're, if you're looking straight through the legs of the gateway arch. And you have a photo of it yeah. that you, you sent to me. Mm-hmm. At, which I grabbed from uh, Google Earth because right. you can put it in 3D mode and you can kind of look yeah. you know, all, all around and uh, get that bird's eye view looking straight through the gateway arch. I'll, in fact, I'll put this in the show notes. Yeah, please. Because it centers on the civil courts building. So looking straight through the arch, in the middle of the arch, you see the civil courts building you framed s- and that ziggurat framed. The, there's dead, dead center. Does it go through the door of return? Yeah. Now, the door of return, though, is parallel to it. It's not, it doesn't face the arch. The door of return is 90 degrees oriented. because oh, it, fa- it faces 909 Chestnut. Oh, that's interesting. Which is why 909 Chestnut is going to be in my novel, The ah, God Game. Ah, yeah, I'm okay. making that the, uh, the headquarters of... The, the villain. Now, those of you listening, if you are not aware of this um, ancient myth in many civilizations, there is a story of stones falling from the sky mm-hmm. that contain a god, and they crack open, and the god emerges. Mithras is one of those types of deities. Right. But this, it's an old idea that may go back to this myth of, of Aranos being castrated by uh, Kronos, mm-hmm. and Everything that spills out, his blood and everything else, falls upon the earth like stones. Mm -hmm. And they contain whatever. Yeah, a deity. Or deities. Yeah. But you get, I think that may be one of the origins of the Betels or the Beatles, Mm -hmm. B-A-E-T-Y-L or B-E-T-Y-L, that were sort of stone-shaped, egg-shaped, sometimes tall pillars Mm -hmm. that didn't necessarily have a whole lot of features on them. And they were considered, the name actually means house of God. House of God, House yeah. of the God. So the, you see a lot of this in Petra, the, yeah. stu, the egg-shaped ones. Right. That represents Dushara. Yeah, it's called aniconic, which means does not, it's not anthropomorphic. Right. 
Yeah. The, Interestingly enough, sometimes they will put um, little eyes, mm-hmm. and other times genitalia. Yeah. So no arms or anything, just hmm. yeah. Well, the, you don't want to leave him without you know some sort of something. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta but know these it's stones, a boy. <laughs> these stones were were worshipped all throughout the ancient Near East. But identified t- as a boy anyway. That's true. Uh, typically, uh, meteorites. Mm-hmm. So whenever mm-hmm. those were found, they were considered sacred. The, according to the Greek story, the sky god Uranus threw these living stones, these betilia, mm-hmm. to Earth to fight against Kronos and the Titans. Ah. But the name betilia comes from the Hebrew Beit El, yes. Bethel. I argued in um, the second coming of Saturn that this was a a, a a twisting of what had happened. I mean, Jacob set up the pillar at Bethel not because he believed God was in the stone, but to commemorate the place. This is where I saw angels walking up and down. And I know we call it Jacob's ladder, but the word in Hebrew actually means ziggurat. Yes. Step pyramid. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that, that in, in fact, just recently, those of you who really pay attention to what goes over in the UK, and of course, because I write, you know, about the UK in history in the Red Wing Saga, I, I pay a lot of attention. And Charles just had his second, I'll put it in air quotes, coronation. Mm-hmm. They don't call it a coronation. It was called a Thanksgiving six, uh, service in Edinburgh mm-hmm. at Holyrood Castle. Mm-hmm. And that was done right before standing before the stone of schoon mm-hmm. which is reputedly put that in air quotes jacob's pillow yeah yeah, yeah. but it, it probably was the stone that the irish kings and later the scottish kings were used for their coronations right. if you didn't have that stone you weren't declared king on the stone then sorry you're not king mm-hmm Interesting, but but the idea that you are that, that it takes place before a representation of access to heaven, a portal. Yeah, that's what these are. They're portals. Exactly. So I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to use the uh, ziggurat in the sky over St. Louis, <laughs> which has been there for 93 years. And I lived in St. Louis for 17 and never noticed it. Didn't that used to be Bell Plaza? Um. I don't know that it was ever called Bell Plaza. I, uh, Keener Plaza, when you're looking from the arch and looking to the, the Bell- west-northwest. building was there, right? It's, yeah, and it's not in a direct line. So oh, okay. 909 Chestnut, this really faces straight down Market Street. Oh, okay. And and really the, the block between Market and Chestnut. Um, and as you look, you see the old courthouse in the foreground. Then you've got Keener Plaza. Uh, which is a well-known park. It's been there a long time. In fact, I sang with the barbershop quartet there to uh, open up the Cardinals season <laughs> one year. I forget when this is, sometime around uh, 94, 95. Uh, and that song echoes <clears throat> there even until yeah. this day. We, we sang the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, in fact, it was Gas House Gang. Did you use the real words? Yeah, yes, we used the real words. Yeah. We did not substitute. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Mm. Um, but anyway, uh, then beyond Keener Plaza is City Garden, this park with the weird statuary, including the one that looks like Hat Man from Night Terrors. That was one of the weirdest pictures when you, you sent me pictures of the various things in the park. Right. Boy, I tell you what, that is how this shadow Hat Man, mm-hmm. I use it in the Red Wing Saga, but I didn't make it up. This is an entity that's been seen for decades, possibly yep. even centuries by kids. Yeah. Yeah, and it, the title of the statue in City Garden is Scarecrow, but it yeah, looks like the Hat Man. It really does. Yeah. So, and there are a couple of other weird statues in there as well. There's one that's called Eros Bound, which is a decapitated giant bronze head. Okay. Yeah, which is you know, Eros, E-R-O-S. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you've got City Garden, and then the, on the next block after that, you've got uh, the Civil Courts Building. Mm. So yeah, kind of an odd collection. I mean, yeah, people going there are... I, it was really, really weird. Is I took a picture of the door of return, and on the far side of that is a little uh, area with some very gentle fountains, where kids are allowed to go in and, and play and splash around. And it was, a, you know, it was a warm day. It was about ninety five degrees, and kids were in there splashing in the fountains and stuff. On the far side of this alien egg cracking open over this yeah. doorway portal, like, boy, this is really bizarre. <laughs> Nicole and I were the only ones that are going. This is really creepy. This is really weird. So I'm not sure how I'm going to use all this in the story yet, but I've got to work it in there. Um, and uh, we will, uh, it, yeah, 
You can't make this stuff up. If I had vented really this stuff. You really can't. I'm looking at the an, an entry on that Eros Bound. Um, it's Eros Bendato, mm -hmm. Eros Bound. Um, this is the work of Igor Mitorai. He's Poli he was Polish. I, I assume he's still with us. Um, just trying to figure out why on earth this head, it's just a head mm -hmm. with... You know, like uh, yeah, wrapping it's, around. It's like a mummy. Right. R eyes and eyes wrapped and it's... But gee, why would you represent the Greek god of love bound? Yeah. Typically, it's uh, Prometheus who's Prometheus been bound. bound. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So why suddenly... I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, it is. Unless you want to say that we're, we don't love anybody anymore. Yeah. Get rid of love. Ooh. Don't know. Take his head off. Ugh. There's another statue there called uh, Two Big Gloves, Four Wheels, and uh, it's actually Pinocchio standing on a little cart, you know. <laughs> like, how do they do that without, you know, getting in trouble with Disney? Yeah, well. I don't know. Mm. Uh, anyway, oh, you to teased one other story, and maybe we can close with this because it makes a good oh, kicker. Oh, oh, ben, ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's, yes. Oh, hung by their own petard. Well, they've come out saying that, you know, hey, we are just so aware of the injustice that's taken place here in the United States, and we want to make a stand and say that the United States should never have stolen Native American land. And they tweeted this out on the 4th of July. They did. Yeah. And uh, so Today, in response, the uh, chief of the Nulhagen Band of the Kusuk Abenaki Nation, Don Stevens, told the New York Post that he, quote, looks forward to any kind of correspondence with the brand to see how they can better benefit indigenous people because Ben and Jerry's headquarters in South Burlington, Vermont is on Western Abenaki land. Yes. Oh, I so <laughs> love that story. Thank uh, you, Lord. Stevens told the post, if you look at the Abenaki traditional way of being, we are place-based people. Before recognized tribes in the state of Vermont, we were the ones who were in this place. So, Ben, Jerry, the ball is back in your court. It is. See you later. <laughs> uh, and on that note, oh, well. Well, we want to thank you for listening. We want to remind you that, you know, if you want to go to gilberthouse.org, there's all sorts of information there. And please download the app. Um, it, it, that supports a Christian company. It, it will guarantee that you, if you find our content interesting or edifying or helpful or just amusing, you can download the app and get all of that, even if we disappear from other venues. But we also want to remind you that we're going to be at a couple of conferences. Yes, yes. Uh, well, a couple things. First of all, on Tuesday, the 25th of July. Yes, we're going to be in Blue Eye, Missouri at mm -hmm. the Morningside yep. for the Jim Baker Show. And our good friend Aaron Lipkin is going to be there as the main speaker. Yes, we're just there as his wingmen, we're wing there. persons. We're, we're the comic relief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Aaron does a good job of that. He's got the best sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. Aaron, what is that? Say? You know, we gated gated fence and uh, we, we're trying to hebrew. find it's written in hebrew we're trying to find this megalithic site what does that say it says tourists will be shot <laughs> oh. oh no no it says uh cattle property please close gate oh okay thank you <laughs> he does have a great very dry sense of humor so if you are in the area and you want to attend that there's no uh, no fee of uh, any kind you just need to get there by about 10 30 in the morning it's at blue eye missouri if you just if you can go to our site in the calendar mm -hmm. you can find it but you can also just type in morning side blue eye missouri yeah and it'll show you where or it go is. to our app go to the calendar on the app and click on the upcoming events, and there's a little map there on the listing for the uh, well, appearance in Morningside. Well, are you clever? Uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's Subsplash, it's the, the company subs that developed the app. Thank you, Christian Company, Subsplash. You are amazing. Um, also, we're going to be in sort of Dayton, Ohio. It's the northwest corner, a little suburb area mm -hmm. called Brookville, yes. Ohio, and we're going to be there for the Go There For conference. Yes, and uh, boy, this is an amazing gathering. You're not going to see this group together again for a long time, I don't think. July 28th and 29th, Friday and Saturday, we will be there with uh, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Michael Lake, Pastor Casper McLeod, Coach Dave Dobbinmeyer, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, yes, indeed. Dr. Five and Five and yes, Dime is uh, Kenny, Kenny C. Kenny calls her. Kenny C. will be there as well. David Hevner and some real spiritual warriors. Tom Dunn, Vicki Joy Anderson, Dr. Greg Reed. David Hevner. Um, yep, David Hevner, Randy Conway, and Nathan Branham. Um, this will be at Pastor Neil Peterson's church, the Harvest Revival Center in uh, Brookville, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
if you can get there, that would be wonderful. It's $59 registration. Wonderful facility. Great place to sit. Very comfortable. And I love that big screen they've got in the front of the room because I'm going to use Aaron Lipkin's drone video Ooh, footage. You're going to want to see that. Yep. Now, if you can't make it there, you can also get streaming video. That is available, and um, you can sign up for that as well at GoThereForConference.com. Oh, excellent. Take advantage of it, because this is a gathering. I mean, you know, L.A. Marzulli, you know, you got no complaints. You got no complaints. It's a, <laughs> you re, I mean, I love L.A. Marzulli. Yeah. We've known him for a long, long time, back before he even called himself L.A., and we, we're not allowed to say his real name. <laughs> but but we want you to join all of us. And, and as I say, this may be one of the last times that group is together. Yeah. Because who knows, it, the in-person conferences are getting more and more rare, sadly. Um, getting all of these wonderful friends together, we just are so excited to be together with many of these friends. With, with these opportunities, yes, because all of us are getting older. There's no question. We are. We're, we're we are. all getting a little older. And we've lost many friends over the last five or six years. Right. So we, we don't want to lose any more. Let's, let's just make every chance to get together. And if you live in the area or if you have the wherewithal to drive or fly, please make plans to just go to gothereforeconference.com. Mm -hmm. uh, information on our Israel tour for 2024 with our special guest, Tim Alberino. You'll find that at uh, our website, gilberthouse.org slash travel, or you can go to gilbertsinisrael.com, gilbertsinisrael.com. And we hope you join us there. And um, let's Our see. Turkey tour is probably going to be put off till 2025. We just had a yeah. correspondence with the, uh, the travel company there, and they're telling us that there's a lot of infrastructure in areas where we wanted to go that's either just still in the process of being rebuilt or just not there anymore. Yep. So we're putting together a new itinerary. It's going to take us a while to finalize all of that. We want to give you plenty of time to plan ahead. So we're just going to put this off until 2025. I, I think that's best. I think that's best because we're, we're nine months out right now. And this this is a kind of a, a and we're still deal. trying to decide exactly where we're going to go. So right. yeah, or where we can go. Yeah. Oh, the good news is that it does appear that uh, not only Gobekli Tepe, but Karahan Tepe yes. will be on the agenda, which yes. uh, was not on the original Tour. And San Lierfa so, is still available. San there, Lierfa, right. Yeah, there are a lot of really wonderful places that are still available, but sadly, um, there are, there are places in in the more uh, western area of yeah, that earthquake like, zone that are just not there. Antakya was yeah. was pretty much destroyed. I know, and I so wanted to see that, but I think Mount Nimrut is still there, mm -hmm. um, which is was another big ask from me. And the Church of Revelation. Yes, they're still there. So just pray that uh, that pray for the people of Turkey. They're still trying to. Mm -hmm overcome the, the damage that was done there and they, frankly they, there's not a whole lot of extra money in turkey no no so we will we will keep you apprised of that but all of that information will always be at gilberthouse.org slash travel um, tomorrow morning join us for the gilbert house fellowship that uh, will be into the psalms again tomorrow morning and then tomorrow evening the um let's see who is on the schedule for tomorrow night hmm. uh, oh 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 uh one of the uh, young ladies that we met on our tour well, I call her young. She's got teenage boys, so she's not young, young, but she's, she's young to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tracy Taylor, or Trace Taylor, she goes by professionally. She is a musician, a worship leader, and um, she's got some very unique styles to her music. So we talk a little bit about... Uh, you yeah. Know, she, she's trying to reach a demographic that you and I would not reach. Right. Her her musical stylings range from... Uh, what, on some of her songs, she sounds a bit like Annie Lennox, but then yeah. she's got a couple of songs that have actually been promoted by uh, publications that are normally devoted to like really dark stuff. It's like, oh, hey, here's this Christian who's making this exactly. Really now it would be really easy for Christians to say, well, you should never go there. I'm sorry, yeah. but there are believe there are unbelievers there who need Jesus. So yeah. you go in. Sometimes you have to go in slightly disguised in a way that they will accept you into their mars hill their, but yes exactly go in as mars hill and say i know the name of this unknown god mm -hmm. years ago i did an interview with a fellow named scott kubinski who called himself kuba the demon slayer yes i remember that he had an online streaming uh, channel a uh, music mm -hmm. channel that uh, was christian metal mm -hmm. and Vocally, these are guys whose vocal cords, you know, are getting frayed every time they sing. But mm. he was reaching out to bikers and members of the biker yeah. community, which very often is uh, just filled with demonic and satanic imagery and, and ideas. These are people who won't listen to 
you know, there is power in the blood right. or a mighty fortress is our God. And in the same way, Trace Taylor is reaching people who are listening to modern pop music or darker stuff, but hitting them with a message of light. Right. So that's tomorrow night on A View from the Bunker. Well, praise God for that. Oh. Boy, we blathered a lot. We did. Well, thank you for joining us. And until next time, I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert. Bye-bye, everybody. PID Radio is an outreach of Gilbert House Ministries, released under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Follow us online, PIDradio.com, Twitter at PID Radio, or by downloading our free app, PIDradio.com slash app, or GilbertHouse.org slash app. Join us each week for our Bible study, the Gilbert House Fellowship. Hey.